Welcome to Brew Builds, your place for DIY home improvements. I'm Paul. Today I'll be starting a major remodeling project in the backyard. This is going to take a while, so come join me on this DIY adventure. This is where it all started. I found a great deal on patio pavers and ended up purchasing 600 square feet, which should be enough to cover the back and side yard of our house. We've been wanting to remodel the backyard for some time, and now I have to do it. Tools and items needed. A rototiller, a jackhammer, a wheelbarrow, a hammer, a bigger hammer, a round point shovel, a square point shovel, a sifter, a demo chisel, wrenches, gloves, and your personal safety gear. So I'll be starting with the demolition, which will include removing a small retaining wall that we never really liked, some tile that was added, and then start breaking up the concrete patio. This area in front of me here will need to be dug out and leveled because we want the patio pavers to extend further into the backyard. Let me take you to my computer and I'll show you some plans to give you an overview of what we want to do. Here is a 3D model that I've built of our house and backyard. The software that I'm using is Lightwave 3D. It's more of a 3D animation program, not really an architectural program. I've been using it for years, so it's easy for me to build a 3D object. Okay, let me show you around the backyard. There is a grape arbor located here outside the bedroom, and a patio cover which is outside the two large sliding glass doors of the living room. The retaining wall that runs along the house will be removed and rebuilt in a different spot. This will allow us to extend the new patio pavers further into the yard, making a much larger patio space. The new patio pavers and retaining walls should look something like this. Dirt will need to be removed from this area so we can install the pavers at the proper height. The pathway in front of the kitchen will be made wider and move away from the wall for easier access into the backyard. A small planter will be added below the kitchen window. Moving to the side of the house, let me show you what it looks like now. The retaining wall will be rebuilt as well, reshaping the garden area, giving us more space for plants. The pavers will extend down to about where the chimney is on the side of the house. So that's a quick overview of our backyard makeover. I actually started some of the demo work before we decided to make some videos on our backyard makeover. Now, you can help motivate me by hitting that like button and subscribing to Brew Build. Alright, let's go back outside and start breaking stuff and shoveling dirt. On the brew scale, technical ability I rate as a novice. You just need a little knowledge of jackhammers, wheelbarrows, shovels, and for me, a rototiller. Physical ability I rate as almost extreme. Moving dirt and breaking concrete is rough on your back and hands, but done properly, you will have a much stronger core. I already removed the small retaining wall and started digging up some of the dirt. Now it's time to remove this tile. I'll use a demo chisel to try to pot them off as one piece, in case we decide to reuse them somewhere. This tile is not original to the house and was added later. They attached them using one inch or so of mortar on top of the existing slab. If I hit it correctly on the edge, right where the tile meets the mortar, I am hoping that they will pop off without breaking. Well, that one broke. But I was able to get quite a few up without breaking. Since mortar breaks up fairly easily, it can be reused as some of the gravel base layer for the pavers. which means more dirt needs to be dug out so I have a place to pile all this stuff. While digging, I discovered an old eucalyptus tree that was cut off and buried. These trees have tapered roots that go straight down. A lots of fun to try to dig up, but I did get it out. 
I used a rotor tiller to dig up the dirt, then shoveled it into a wheelbarrow, then dumped it into my dirt pile. The rotor tiller would dig about three to four inches at a time. Now, this did take a while to move all the dirt, but it would have been very challenging to get any type of skip loader, even a small one, into the backyard. A string line and level is used to measure for the proper depth of the dirt. When it was close, I used a square point shovel to scrape the dirt flat. I had to dig down about 8 inches below the corner of the house. 4 inches for gravel, 1 inch for sand, 2 inch for the pavers, and 1 inch for a slope from the house for drainage. Once the dirt was dug to the level needed, it was time to start breaking up the concrete. After breaking up some of the tile, mortar, and concrete, I noticed that when they added the tile, they put it higher than the drip screed for the stucco. This caused moisture to get trapped and degrade the wall. I'm gonna want the pavers to be below the stucco, so unfortunately for me, I need to remove another two inches of dirt. There was a French drain that went through the backyard. It was surrounded in gravel. I ended up sifting the gravel from the dirt so I could reuse it again. Some other areas in the dirt had some high concentrations of pebble rocks as well, so I sifted those too. It took some time, but we ended up with a few hundred pounds of gravel. Back to removing more dirt. Once the dirt was at the proper level for the second time, I was able to move all the broken mortar and concrete into piles on top of the dirt. This gave me more space to break the concrete into smaller pieces to reuse as gravel. I put together a video on breaking up concrete, so be sure to check out my other videos if you need tips on how to break concrete. I was hoping that I could leave the patio cover and its posts in place, but discovered that the posts were pretty much rotted, and the center post really wasn't attached to anything at all. I'm not ready to pull the whole patio cover down, so some supports were added while I broke up the concrete below. I attached some 2x4 triangular braces spreading the load against the house. Once the patio cover was supported, I unbolted the posts from the post bases, which weren't really doing anything anyways. It was actually rather alarming. Oh wow. Whoever installed this just used a half inch lag bolt into a piece of 2x4 wood that has disintegrated. This is not how you attach a post to concrete. Okay, this post doesn't have any load on it. Now I can go back to breaking up the rest of the concrete. Well, that pretty much should take care of the demolition. I'm kind of surprised how much dirt I actually had to move and how large this dirt pile is behind me. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it all. I should be able to use some of it when I reshape the garden area on the other side of the house and use some of it down this side of the house to help with some drainage issues. Now the next step will be to get rid or try to reuse some of the broken concrete as gravel, adding in any utility lines for lighting and possibly a gas line for a barbecue. My wife and I are still trying to finalize the plans, so be sure to subscribe to Brew Builds, that way you'll know when the next video is posted. And if you need any dirt, let me know, I have plenty.